You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Something to me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Temptations Ballad. So let's go ahead and jump right back when we left off. I'm wondering just how our heroes are gonna get out and get themselves out of this mess. They are quite outnumbered. But can they outsmart the competition? Well, let's dive right back in and see. Anyway, guys, sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes while entertain you. Let's jump right in. Alarm sound you're up. And let's go. Okay. <laughs> ah, alright, let's do that again. Come closer to the wall and I shall uh, show you the truth behind your recent gay thoughts. <laughs> huh? I wasn't thinking anything like that. The door suddenly appeared out of thin air and slammed open, smacking Sid in the face. He yelped and fell backwards while clutching his nose. Immediately, Clyde and Artemy leaped out to gag him and drag him into the room behind them. Sid tried to yell and thrash about wildly. Sir Sid, control yourself! Her words fell on deaf ears as Sid launched a kick straight into Clyde's stomach, sending him wheezing on the floor. Tiger clutched his abdomen with a groan. Ugh! This guy's stronger than he looks! No wonder why everyone lost against him today. Artemy grabbed Sid's arm and twisted it behind his back before pinning him to the floor with a thud. I'm sorry, Sir Sid. Try to resist the mage's control just a little longer. Sid's eyes flashed red and he continued to writhe madly on the floor under her grip. Ugh! We might not be able to hold him for long! Cole, are you ready yet? Behind them, Cole patted his pockets hastily. Yep, looks like I got everything I need. All right, you two, hang tight for a bit. It's time for me to make my move. Cole dashed past the three wrestling on the floor with a wink. If you hear me scream, come to the main room immediately. I'd prefer to stay not dead. Clyde groaned as he struggled to pin a struggling Sid's legs down. Just hurry up! Oh, you're still there, I guess. The cloaked figure grumbled with increasing frustration. The crowds of mind-controlled people slowly returned to the fighting ring, each of them empty-handed. The mage gritted their teeth anxiously as they gripped the one ruby they managed to snatch from Val earlier. Damn these stupid peasants. I need those accursed rubies. It's bad enough that the black market tiger really lost the, already lost the other two. Suddenly, a tall figure with red eyes leapt into the room with a triumphant grin. A mind-controlled Sid raced across the room with his hand outstretched. Master, I have found the ruby you seek! Sid reached into his pocket and pulled out a bright red gem, as dark and glistening as blood. The cloaked figure rushed forward and greedily snatched it from his hands. Good, good. It seems you lot aren't completely useless after all. The cloaked figure examined the ruby closely, and the gem shape, the gem shape suddenly, sl suddenly shimmered like wisps of heat on a hot summer day. The illusion on the ruby abruptly melted away and revealed a fully charged arcane crystal shuddering in their hand instead. What? What is the meaning of this? The charged arcane crystal glowed brighter and suddenly exploded with Artemis' dispel magic in a white-hot flash. The mage was knocked backward in the blast with a surprised shout. As they fell, the mage felt their grip on the minds of the crowd dissipating. Everyone in the room suddenly hunched over, clutching their heads and groaning as though they were suffering a painful hangover. The sinister red glow from their eyes slowly vanished as the crowd regained their senses. The mage picked themselves off the floor in a panic scramble. How in the world? Huh? I can't believe you fell for such a cheap trick. Impossible! Those red eyes! You should still be under my control! The tall badger's body suddenly glowed softly before fading away in a faint white mist. Ha <laughs> ha! Clever boy. The fog dissipated to reveal Cole standing over the mage with a smug grin. This guy's self is a pretty nifty spell, eh? You! Uh-oh. Cole yelped as the cloaked figure leaped and tackled him to the floor. The two of them writhed and struggled on the ground as the figure attempted to wrestle the remaining ruby out of Cole's pocket. Cole did his best to kick the mage off of him, but his scrawny legs did little to deter them. Hey, you should at least bear it by me dinner before sticking your hand- <laughs> Enough of this nonsense! Give. Me. The goddamn ruby! <laughs> Artemy Clyde and a freshly reawakened Sid rushed into the room. Cole! But boss Are you alright? On the edge of the ring, Val picked himself up off the ground with dazed eyes. The rest of the crowd were, all, were also slowly regaining their wits. Each of them turned towards the cloaked mage fighting Cole on the floor with pure indignation and fury in their eyes. The cloaked figure looked up from fighting Cole on the stone floor to see a wall of angry people approaching them cracking their knuckles and baring their teeth. Hey, let my boss go! Your time is up, little mage. Our fighting ring doesn't take kindly to troublemakers. I'm making you pay for all the damages to my ring, you hear? A 
sharp crackle ignited the air along with the acrid smell of lightning. Artemy readied another javelin of electricity and trained her sights on the cloaked mage. Unhand Cole immediately! I shall now I shall show no mercy to those who dare harm the innocent civilians of Axia. The mage looked up and hesitated for a split second. It was enough for Cole to squirm out of their grasp and leap safely into the crowd. Artemy launched her guiding bolt the instant Cole was at a safe distance. The bolt of lightning shot through the air, branches of electricity trailing behind it like a furious comet in the mage's direction. Shield. An arcane wall solidified in the air in a flash. Artemy's javelin instantly dispersed into sparks of light the moment it made contact with the shield, leaving the mage behind it untouched. The cloaked figure hissed with increasing frustration at the crowd surrounding them. You fools are interfering with matters you cannot dream of comprehending. Now give me that ruby! Artemy snarled and drew her sword. You dare put the lives of innocent people in danger for a piece of jewelry? Are you serious? Her voice rasped with barely controlled fury. You understand nothing. You understand nothing, Jon Snow. You know nothing, Jon Snow. The cloaked figure raised their hands, sinister magic weaving between their fingertips. Conjure Elemental! The bricks and stones of the building suddenly began shuddering rapidly. Ooh! Brick by brick, a wave of stones toppled out of the walls and conjoined together into a, to a dozen stone figures standing at the center of the fight. The earth shook as the mass of stone elementals approached the crowd, each one towering over even the t tallest wolf fighter of the ring. The crowd seemed to see, screamed and immediately began retreating. Clyde watched his fighting ring fall to shambles with a hint of despair in his eyes. This won't end well. I hate to admit it, but we must retreat as well. Our bare fists won't do much to solid stone. Stand aside. Painfully intense light suddenly illuminated the room. Cole and Sid shielded their eyes from the glow, their eyes watering from the brilliance. It felt like staring directly into the sun. Artemy had her sword drawn. Radiant light roared, for, from, roared across her blade like wrathful lightning. The celestial golden glow flickered as she took a step forward, streaks of lightning leaping from her sword. As these are simply stone conjurations, I see no reason to hold back. They will crumble before laying a single strike on an innocent life. Holy! It's so bright in here, I can't see shit! I didn't know you were this strong! As Cole hid behind Sid, he made a mental note to avoid pissing off Artemy in the future. She didn't appear to have heard them, her focus solely on the foe. The creator's chosen glared at the awestruck mage standing across the room with a snarl. I am giving you one less chance to surrender, mage. The cloaked figure just watched her with utter fascination. Such brilliant celestial light. You are truly a marvelous vessel. He has done a rather magnificent job with you, hasn't he? Artemy faltered for a split second. What are you talking about? The mage flicked her wrist. The mage flicked his wrist. Flicked their wrist. The dozens of hulking elementals suddenly charged the crowd. Artemy snarled and swung her blade. Divine smite! The earth shook violently as deafening thunder cut through the air. The dozens of stone elementals immediately shattered into a shower of pebbles from a single swing of Artemy's blade. The world faded away to a haze of light, filled with only the acrid smell of ozone and crackling electricity. Ah. Uh. Well, Clyde, I guess you're gonna have to take out a loan to help with their repairs because this is some shit. <laughs> oh my, the entrance wall of the fighting ring collapsed into a pile of rubble. Parts of the building were falling down in a rain of debris and dust. The crowd from the ring ran all outside, screaming in terror as they shielded their heads. Cole felt Sid's strong arms around his waist as a large, large badger held him protectively against his chest and carried him out, the, out of the ruined building. His ears were still ringing from the celestial blast. But boss! Are you okay? You didn't hit your head, did you? Uh... How many fingers am I holding up? None? Your hands are on my ass right now. <laughs> Sid yelped and dropped him like a hot potato. Cole's behind hit the floor with a painful thump. Ow! What was that for? So sorry, I just panicked. So sorry for touching your butt. Cole picked himself off the ground with a huff. Well, if you have the energy to freak out like this, I know you're alright, too. Ooh, excuse me, he stared at the blushing badger slowly. Sid's shirt was peppered with holes. The skin on his back was angry with red scratches and cuts from where he shielded Cole from the falling debris. A flash of guilt burned inside Cole's chest. He almost, he almost left the big guy behind. Behind them, Clyde climbed out of the rubble and stared at the destruction in shock. M my ring! M my business! 
More guilt fluttered through Cole as he gingerly approached his ex. He reached out and gently squeezed the tiger's hand. Hey, man, it's no big deal. Papa's a big fan of your work. He and Hamish could probably talk to a few folks and get your ring up and running again. The tiger continued staring at the collapsing building, his expression unmoving. Cole frowned and shuffled his feet uncomfortably. Um, Clyde? Do you need a place to stay tonight? There's always room at the Bone Breakers if you want. Clyde sighed and shook his head. I... I think you've done enough. Cole fell silent. I understand. I'll, I'll give you some space. He retreated back to Sid's side with an uncomfortable grimace. Sid glanced between the two in a mixture of confusion and worry. But boss, is everything alright? Sure. Though I wouldn't call today a great success. Artemy suddenly rushed out of the collapsing building and glanced around frantically. Where did that mage go? I searched the entire building, but I could not find a trace of them. Cole and Sid exchanged surprised looks and scanned the large alleyway. The cloaked figure was nowhere to be found. Maybe our... Maybe our... Your big chosen one smiting vaporized them. That was one hell of a blast. Artemy shook her head. Nay, I doubt my divine smite is capable of that. Well, the most logical explanation is that they escaped. They're a mage, after all. Probably use some sort of spell to teleport out of, the, out, before the, out of there before getting hit. It could be anywhere by now. Artemy dropped to her knees, utterly crestfallen. I... I failed. What will I tell her excellency? Hey, deep breaths. Don't go all panic attacky on us. Cole patted her back with a sympathetic smile. Think positive. At least we recovered the crown itself. It's a few jewels to the royal prince, anyway. Artemy blinked and looked up optimistically. Ah, I've forgotten! Cole, do you still have one of the rubies? Oh, right. It should be here. Cole rummaged through his pockets and froze. Uh-oh. Uh he grimaced and gave Artemy a sheepish shrug. I don't have it. That mage must have grabbed it out of my pocket while we were tussling on the floor. The hopeful glint in Artemy's eyes instantly vanished. She buried her face in her hands, head hung low in shame. <laughs> oh, lost me. My first day outside the church district has been an utter disaster. Her Excellency was right. I am a sham of a chosen one. Hey, no, don't treat your, don't beat yourself up too much. I mean, sure, you lost a few gems and collapsed the front of a building, but you saved the lives of everyone here. This place is an illegal operation anyway. More importantly, you and Boss saved me. That mind-controlling spell felt awful. I'm glad I got my wits about me again. I owe the two of you big time. Cole looked away guiltily. Artemy caught sight of his expression but stayed silent. I'm glad you were safe, Sir Sid. Sid flashed her an enthusiastic grin. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe I got rescued by the Creator's Chosen on my first day of work. Wait till my mom hears about this. It's amazing I got to meet you today. Artemy watched Sid's giddy laughter with a, with a soft, tired smile. You are too kind. I envy your optimism, Sir Sid. Speaking of good things, let's talk about your pay for today, shall we? Eh? Hey, it's your first day of work as an adventurer, and the best part of adventuring is getting paid. Cole opened up his small coin stack, the sack stu stuffed to the brim with gambling money, and recovered the obsidian crown. And recovered obsidian crown. Here's your crown, knighty. Cole turned towards Sid as he continued digging through his pa pouch. And for you, here's an even split of the winnings from the fighting ring. Not bad for a hard day's work, eh? Sid watched, stupefied as Cole poured a large pile of coins into his hands. This was more than his family made in a week. Maybe he'll finally be able to make, take his parents on vacation, or at the very least give his mom a break from work. He finally did something worthwhile. Sin's, Sid's grin widened as he gripped the coins tightly. I... D did I do a good job today? Of course. Couldn't have done it without you, buddy. Really? You're not going to let me go in like a week or like all my other bosses, will you? Cole blinked in surprise. What? Why would I do that? You've been a great lackey. I don't tend to let go of good men. Keep up the good work and you'll become a great adventurer like Papa in no time. Sid felt his chest hurt from the sheer joy flooding his heart from his boss's words. Maybe he wasn't such a disappointing son after all. He let out a hearty laugh and swept Cole off his feet in a smothering hug. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking a chance on me, boss. I promise you won't regret it. Hey, let me down, you big oaf. We haven't gotten to the point where we exchange casual hugs yet. Sid's voice suddenly cracked and trembled as he held Cole close. Cole glanced up and froze. Oh no, don't give me that. I can't deal with crying people. Sid laughed and began and wiped away the tears with his arm. <laughs> Sorry for getting all sappy. It's just that I've been falling for so long in my life. Failing for so long in my life. You're the first person who wanted me to stay. Sid's warm hung around him tightened. Cole felt cold as the badger's joy sniffling laughter reverberated through his chest. He tried his best to ignore the guilt pulling in the pit of his stomach and flashed Sid a half-hearted smile. 
Well, that concludes your first day of work. Meet me at the Bonebreakers Guild, the Guild Building tomorrow, and we'll get you set up with some proper adventuring gear. Go home and rest. Go home and get some rest, big guy. Sid finally let go of their hug and nodded excitedly. Will do! Thank you again, boss! Heh. <laughs> Cole turns towards Artemis' sullen, fig sullen figure quietly. Oh, and you get a share of our winnings too today, of course. For me? Yeah, we couldn't have gotten out of this mess without you, after all. He opened his coin sack and poured out a generous amount into our hands. Artemis' gaze was cautious and rigid. Ah, and even split! How surprisingly... fair. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> hey... Listen, thanks. Hmm? Artemy looked down at the small hyena with a, with a hint of confusion. If I may ask, thanks for what? Cole crossed his arms and avoided her gaze with an uncomfortable frown. You know, for stopping me. Artemy blinked in surprise. She regarded him with quiet curiosity. You're truly a perplex perplexing man, Kaladai Bonebreaker. I simply do not understand you, Cole snapped up with a glare. What's there to understand? Not everyone gets to be a shining example of perfection, O oh chosen one. Some of us are born a little disappointing. Artemy returned his glare with a stern frown of her own. I understand that feeling completely, but disappointing or not, we are still capable of making the right choices. Cole rolled his eyes and stuffed his coin sack roughly into his pockets. Oh? Would you have chosen to come out today if, if you knew that you'd fail so horribly? Artemy's shoulders stiffened. She stared down at the obsidian crown in her hands. Her grim face turned, stared back in the reflections of the empty gym sockets. Sometimes it's best to stay in your lane when you know your own limits. Disappointment is all you'll find in the end. Cole sighed and dusted himself off. Anyway, it's getting dark. It's probably best if we headed home. He turned and waved his hand in farewell. I'll be seeing you around, Chosen One. Artemy was left alone in the front of the crumbling facade of the fighting ring entrance. She stared quietly at Cole's retreating figure. I think you're wrong, Cole. Oh. The city watch and the church's holy knights appeared roughly an hour after the explosion at Clyde's fighting ring. All the residents of the ring had fled by the time the authorities arrived, including Clyde and Val. The knights in the city watch led a thorough search of the ring and confiscated most of Clyde's black market goods, but the rubies were nowhere to be found. All traces of the cloaked mage had disappeared except for the scattered remains of broken stone from the destroyed stone elementals. Despite Artemis' insistence on helping them continue the search, the holy knights ordered her to return home. The City Watch gently reminded the Knights that Artemy and her friends were still wanted for driving a wagon through the front door of an arcane shop this morning, but the Knights waved it off and swiftly lifted the charges. And thus, so ends this adventuring party's hectic first day. God, that was day one. Good lord. The fuck are we going to be doing on day five? Fighting a... Fuck, God, fight, fighting a damn dragon? Uh, um, getting... Uh, banging a dragon, or getting banged by a dragon. We'll be fighting a necromancer. <laughs> Sparrow's Inn and Tavern. Night had long fallen by the time Sid arrived home to Sparrow's Roost Inn and Tavern. Business had closed hours earlier. The tavern was quiet and the dining area devoid of customers. As Sid climbed the stairs towards his family's living quarters, he could hear his parents' usual squabbling echo through the narrow wooden hallway. With a soft smile, he made his way towards the door. Alright guys, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. What a jam-packed episode. That was great. And it had a nice little end to it, too. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!